Good afternoon. Uh, we're coming to you today from uh, Belmont Church. Um, me and Brother Jasmine asked to come, and, and uh, I've had a message on my heart and, and to preach, and uh, Brother Jeff's going to sing some praise and worship music. So uh, we just want to give God all the glory and honor for being here, and uh, we're just we're just thankful that uh, we know things are different. We know times are different than any of us has ever seen. And, uh, the church is empty, but this is the pulpit that I'm most comfortable in. And I believe that the Holy Spirit always resides in this church. So uh, I'm going to let Brother Jeff sing, and then I'm going to come back up and uh, preach a message to you. And uh, That's how we're going to proceed here. sing of his promises. Pour out your thankfulness today. Thankful for what we got. Mm, I'm telling you, I just can just, I keep coming home and I think of all the abundance that I have and I'm telling you, there's a lot of there's a lot of gratitude that's missing in my prayers, but I just want to honor him with an offering of praise right here and now today.
Took the shackles off my feet. There's no sound louder than a captive set free. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And sing of his promises evermore. Pour out your thankfulness and let it Brother Jeff, uh, I got to tell you, we, <clears throat> we're honored to, to come and to get to share God's word with you, to, to have this opportunity and uh, to be able to, uh, you know, just thank, just thank God for the technology. Thank God that in this time and in, in times like we've never seen, that we uh, have a way to get the gospel out there and that you know, the blessing of the Lord and just to share the comfort and the peace that, that he will bring when, when it seems in, uh, that peace is hard to find. When it seems that, that, that fear is, uh, is running rampant. Uh, so I was, I was thinking about this message and actually we preached a message a couple nights ago and, and done a little service on Facebook and and I thought that I would come in and kind of preach the same thing. And, and uh, you know, the, to be honest with you, they get a little better each time you preach them and stuff. But uh, that's not the way it's going to be. The Lord, he gave me something different. I kind of preached on the sunshine. And, and uh, today I want to preach a message that, that's entitled, we got to, it's entitled, Praise Our Way. Praise Our Way. So I want to talk to you a little bit about about fear, uh, I think it's something that we've all experienced in the last few days, in the last couple of weeks, and, and more so as we've gotten closer to this, this COVID-19 thing, to this thing that, that we're going through. And as Brother Jeff said, this invisible enemy. Well, I want to tell you, we've, <clears throat> we've been facing an invisible enemy Woo! for a long time. But he's just got a new weapon. And, uh, you know, whether or not this weapon is, is more, and evidently it is, it's, 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 he's having more luck with it right now. But I'm going to tell you, I realized this in, in reading Genesis chapter 3, the first place that fear was in the Bible, the first place that we have a record in the Bible of fear, uh, of fear coming into effect was when Adam and Eve were in the garden. And they, uh, and they, 
you know, they, they needed the tree of, of good knowledge of good and evil. And in and and Genesis 3.10 says, as the Lord come on, he said, the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in that garden and I was afraid because I was naked. I hid myself. Well, I'll tell you, the devil, he wants us to, he wants us to hide today. He wants us to try to hide. He wants to, to expound that fear on you. And, and most of us, um, like I said the other night, are, are afraid. Most of us not afraid for ourselves, but afraid for our loved ones. They say this uh, virus affects the elderly and it affects those, those ones that are, that are weak and had to, already had issues with their lungs and, and stuff. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest. For a few days, for a couple of days, it affected me in, in, uh, for my baby. You know, we got a two-year-old little girl. And she has a, has a lung problem or has a mild asthmatic problem and, and suffered from that. And, you know, all I could think about was, was packing something back to the house and, and being afraid that, that she was going to catch it. And, and, and the devil, you know, he, he knows where your weakness is. He can, he can feel, he can smell, he can sense your weakness. So he sensed that weakness and that fear in me. And, and I realized that I was worrying and that I was thinking about this too much and, and constantly. And I spoke to my aunt about it and, and got to thinking and praying and, and asking God to help me with this. And it come to me and that I had to lay this down, that I had to bring her to the feet of Jesus, that I had to lay her down like I've laid down them other problems in my life. And I had to, I had to realize that I had to give her to God. I had to do all that I can do to keep her safe. Now, I'm not saying that you should uh, not sanitize or that you should not, that you should ignore these things. It says that we should obey those that are put in government positions above us because God has put them people there. But I'm saying to you that we can't let, we can't let the devil to keep attacking us with those fears and with those, with those things that, that, that we're worried the most about, those uh, the losing of loved ones. And, the, and you know, guys, it's, it's different. It's a different time out there. And we've got to turn our, turn our eyes and our sight and our prayers to the Lord. And the idea of this message, that we got to praise our way. I think that we're all praying. If you're a Christian right now, if, you're, if you love the Lord Jesus and, you know, you're thinking about the times, what I thought is what he's, what he's brought me from and where he's brought me to. And, you know, it seems that, that this thing is different. It's not just about the problems that we've had. It's not just about the sin that we brought on ourselves or that we've committed it, that we've been led away by our own lust. This is something that's, that's out of our control. This is something that makes us all feel weak. It makes us all feel helpless in this time. But I tell you what, I know one that's not helpless. Woo! I know one that we can, we can turn to. And they, they don't seem to find a, to be able to find a cure for this. And they don't seem to be able to, to, to come across with anything that's, that's going to make um, a difference right now. But I tell you what, I know one that can make a difference. And I know one that if we will turn our heart and turn our eyes towards him and seek his face and get on our knees and seek the Lord and pray, then I believe that if we will start to praise him, I'm telling you, I'm going to praise him now. I'm going to praise him because this is going to be over, because we're going to find a cure for this, because we're going to come back. I'm going to praise him ahead of time because I believe this church is going to fill back up, that we might be preaching and it might be going out to other people online, but I dream of a day. I believe there will be a day when there's people back sitting in these pews. I believe that, and I'm going to praise him for it. So I want to read to you today out of uh, Isaiah 12. I'm going to read to you out of Isaiah 12, and uh, start in verse 1 here. It says, In that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, that thou wast angry with me, 
Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. And the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. <clears throat> he also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in the day shall ye praise the Lord, call upon his name, and declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted, saying unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. So this is like I was saying. It says, in the day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. And, and as we begin to pray in your prayers, I, I'm, I believe that we should begin to praise the Lord that we're going to come through this. That, you know, that this is going to be over. And that we should begin to praise him and exalt him above all these things. We're seeing governments, uh, leaders that are usually at odds, agree in these things. They're starting to agree on things. And I tell you, it's like a good friend of mine told me, you better pay attention when that starts to happen. So I'm going to praise God for that happening. I'm going to praise him that, that we're going to find a cure for this thing. I'm going to praise him that this thing is going to be over. I'm going to exalt his name. And if there's people out there right now, if you're spending time that you usually don't, you're used to being busy. A lot of us are used to life and, and being busy, and we do things for the Lord, but we are spending more time at home and, and doing uh, having more time on our hands, and, and some of it good with our families and, and spending <clears throat> much time that 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 we're not used to having. Um, and some of us, it's making us a uh, little stir crazy. Some of us, it's making us to to uh, to think, you know, we're getting a little cooped up and a little little claustrophobic or, or homophobic or whatever you want to call it. But the thing is, I want to tell you, like a wise man told me one time, if you think you're bored, if you think you've got time on your hands that that uh, you don't have nothing to do with. He said, you got a Bible, don't you? You know, there's never been another time. We might not ever have a, another time that we're, we're set down with this much time on our hands to, to be able to read our Bible, to be able to build our relationship with God, to be able to spend that time praying and, and, and seeking Him and reading His Word. And that's, that's what it's going to take. We're going to have to begin to praise the Lord. For, for the answers that we need out here. It's a, it's a more uh, important time now than it's ever been. Than it's ever been for in our lifetime that we can remember and a different time than, than anyone has ever faced. Like Brother Jeff said, it's, and, and like I said earlier, we're facing uh, an invisible enemy. But we've always faced that invisible enemy. And I, I know in the end of this book, the one that wins. Yeah. And I know that, that God is going to see us through this. And we're going to begin to praise him. And I'm going to, I'm going to turn, I want you to turn with me over to Nehemiah 8. And this is a, where they found the, the Mosaic laws. And, and uh, Ezra was going to read them to the, to the people of Israel. And the, the public reading of Moses' law and teaching. And this is what I'm looking forward to, guys. This is what I'm, what I'm hoping that the Lord will, uh, I'm praying, I'm going to praise, praise the Lord that this is going to be over. It's, it says that Ezra, Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up and Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. <clears throat> all the people answered, amen, amen. With the lifting of hands, they bowed their heads and worship the Lord with their faces to the ground. And guys, I, I can't wait till the day that, that there's people back in this church and that they're holding their hands up and they're saying amen as the songs are being sang and, and amen as the preaching, is being, as, a, as the word of God is being delivered, as the bread of life is being preached up here. I'm going to be honest with you, it's a little different preaching in here without anybody in here. 
But I tell you what, there's, there's, we're two or more together than he is in the midst. So I'm, I'm praising the Lord that we have a way to get this out to you today. I'm going to praise the Lord that this is going to be over. I'm going to praise the Lord and, and, and stand on his holy word that, that one day soon we're going to see a day that, I, that we're going to be so happy that we're going to come back to church and it'll be, and this economy will rebound, I believe, with greater than it's ever been before. And I'm going to praise God for that. I'm going to praise him now for it. So even though we have our prayers, but we should give him praise. And, and like I said, sometimes praying is just not enough that we need to begin to praise our way through this situation. That we need to begin to, to praise the Lord. You go on down here to 10, and this is to, to 18, Nehemiah 18. It says, then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet, and send the portions unto whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither ye be sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. For the joy of the Lord, guys, is our strength. It might be hard for you to find that joy right now. You might not be, you might be thinking that, well, I'm, this, this world, this fear is going to close and end. And that's what the devil wants us to think. But just like it said over there, back over there, not read a minute ago, the joy of thy salvation. We have joy of the Lord. And if you think about it, if you read his word, we have to take, like Brother TJ, we had talked about, he preached the other day, you have to take joy in the moments that you have. Those moments that you have with your children, with your family, they should mean more now than they, than they ever have. The time that you spend with God should be more precious, precious to you now than it, than it was before. And anything that makes us pay attention to the Lord and, 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 and to find and search for that joy, for that peace, the peace that passes all understanding. Guys, the fruit is produced in the valley. And we might be in a valley right now, but I believe with all my heart, we are going to stand on that mountain again. And I believe I'm going to praise him for, for the coming out of the valley and for that, for that fruit that is going to be buried. I believe that there'll be souls. I believe there'll be people come to God during this time that maybe wouldn't have before, that maybe didn't stop their lives or wasn't slow enough, and maybe they will turn their face and their heart to God. They will, they will look to the Lord where maybe they didn't before. So we have to, we all know some of us has been through bad things in our life that, that have produced good at the end of it. And this might be a bad thing, and I'm not trying to make light of it or make it seem like it's not. But I'm going to praise the Lord for the good that is going to come at the end of this. And I believe there will be an end. And I believe that people that, that didn't know the Lord not before will, will see that, that they need the Lord now. And those of us that know him, I believe that we will be able to build our relationship with him even more. It says in our weakness, he is made strong. And praise the Lord of thy salvation. And that's what we're going to do. So I'd ask you to, uh, just to praise him, just to give God praise, even in the, in the, in the hard times, in these times that, that are uncertain. We still need to praise him, guys. We as Christians, as strong Christians, brothers and sisters, don't need to forget that our time on this earth is but a short while. It's but a short time that we spend here and that our, this is not our home. This is but, it says it is, is but a vapor passing away. And, and our, our life is to be spent in eternity to keep your mind on heavenly things. Well, the devil, he wants to fight you when times are, are bad in times like this to keep you focused on, on these things here. But we got to put our, put our mind and put our focus on, on that heavenly home and know that at the end of this, if we're saved and we're Christians, that our reward is up in heaven not on this earth anyway. So, <clears throat> I want to I want to share something with you here, and uh, for you, for those of you that are 
are, you know, struggling and, and, and needing something to, to lift them up. And, uh, and, and like I said, it, it comes to the, to, the praise, to the praise of God and to the joy of our salvation. And, and it should, should always be, should always be, back to, to Romans 9, 29. <clears throat> and it says, Isaiah said before, except the Lord of the Sabbath had left us a seed, we had been in Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. But he did leave us a seed. He left us Jesus Christ that died for our sin and that died that, that, died that, so we, that we may live and that we can find our salvation and that joy of it. And we don't need to forget to give him praise in these hard times and praise him for what he's done for us. Because no matter what time we spend on this earth, we are going to spend eternity in heaven with him. So I'd like to, to give you something here for you guys that, that uh, maybe get to see this, that don't know the Lord. And you're out there, you're searching for something. And, and this church, we've always said, has been built for to see the salvation of lost souls. So maybe you got a chance to see this when it normally something you wouldn't. And normally you wouldn't come in here. And uh, I, want, I want to share something with you. That's, you know, 1 John 1, 9 says that if we confess our sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And Romans 10, verses 9 and 10 says, As Thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus shall deliver. And <clears throat> if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. For with thy heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with thy mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I've been speaking to uh, aunt, an aunt of mine, my Aunt Becky, and, and, and for the last year or so I've been witnessing to her and, and giving her some of these scriptures and stuff. And, and, you know, bless the Lord, she gave me something the other day. She told me what she'd been praying every morning. And she sent me a copy of this prayer that she's been praying. It says, Dear God, I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sin and that you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my savior and follow him as Lord from this day forward. Guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if you, if you need the Lord in your life or if you need that fear to subside and you're worried about your loved ones like I was worried about my little girl. And like, I pray that you bring your problems. I pray that you bring your life and you lay it down at the foot of Jesus. Bring it to the foot of the cross and you give that to him tonight. And that you give your life. There is never, we said a lot, but there is, it's, it's here. There's never been a better time than to, now to make your calling and election sure. To make your family, to witness to your family, to let them know, hey, we need to get this thing right. We need to, we need to make sure that this is not all for you. That you will be in that eternal home. That we will live and that we will see each other in eternity, in heaven one day. So I ask you today, don't ever hesitate to give your heart to Jesus. And, and give him praise. Give him praise when you do. Make, make it public if you can. If you've got to get on Facebook and record it and, and, and say, I give my life to the Lord and I want his peace. I want his change. And you get in your Bible and you start to, and you can get on the internet. Thank God in this time we have the internet that you can still watch preaching, that you can still see the word of God, that we can do things like this and, and put it out even if it is a little different even if the sermons are exactly the same. But we can still share the word of God. We can still praise the Lord. I'm going to praise him today. I hope there's a Christian scientist, a Christian uh, medical person that, that, that comes up with a cure for this and that he just steps out and he just says, I'm going to give God the glory for giving me the vaccine. And I'm going to pray that our 
president, and, and I know our vice president, somebody steps out and says, we are going to get this done, and that these vaccines and these medicines are going to be laid, because in God we trust, and we give our life to Jesus Christ, whatever it takes, but we need to praise the Lord. We need to turn our hearts back to him and trust in him and his ways. And if you don't know him, I hope that you play this back, this sinner's prayer that I've read to you, or you go online like my Aunt Becky did, and you'll look it up, and you go to 1 John 1, 9, and you confess your sins, and you get over here in Romans 10, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and that you believe with all your heart, and you once you achieve this, you will praise him for your salvation. And I'm going to praise him ahead of time for the end of this thing. We might not know when it's coming, but I just believe it's coming. I believe it's coming with all my heart. And I believe no matter what, that I have the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart and in my life. And that no matter what, it's going to be okay with him. It's going to be okay. And that's what we got to believe. The joy of <clears throat> the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You can't let the devil through fear and through anxiety steal your joy from you. It might take you a second to get your legs up under you, but you can say, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me. And we might have to use our sanitizer. Or we might have to use our Lysol or spray our groceries down if you got to before you bring them in the house and wipe your stuff off. And, and stay six foot away from everybody. But I tell you what, as long as we got a Bible, as long as we can, it, it, like my brother said, there might not be more bread on the shelves, but we got the bread of life. Woo! And I want to tell you, if you don't, if you got that time on your hands and you're going stir crazy and you're, or you're, you think that you're used to doing things and you're bored, man, there's no better time than to build your relationship with God. To do these things, to to seek Him, to read His Word, to uh, to just to fall in love with Jesus. There's no greater time. There used to be a room that I studied at the mission, and, and the light shined through. That's the message that I preached the other day. Let the sun shine, and and uh, you know I want to say if you ain't seen that, then you can friend my wife Chastity uh, Taylor on Facebook, and she will be glad to let you see that message. And we would love for you to see it and share it with you, share the Word of God with you. But there's, as I preached that, I've talked about a room that I would study the Word in as I began to experience God and get closer to Him. There was a quote wrote down in that room by C.S. Lewis that said, <clears throat> To fall in love with God is the greatest of romance, to seek Him the greatest adventure, and to find Him the greatest human achievement. I pray that through all this, if you don't know him, that you find God, that you find Jesus Christ, and you find your Savior. So I want to share one more thing with you. Um, one more one more thing that, that, you know, if you're a Christian and if, if you love the Lord and you know God works sometimes through his, uh, through his word and, and through the things that we we basically what I'm what I'm saying here is sometimes that that uh, you know you might hear something uh, a verse or something from somebody or uh, when when something starts to to be on your mind and, and uh, come come to you or, or basically if you if you hear one scripture in one place and then you get by another Christian friend or or, or something like that, you'll, you'll hear that scripture and, and uh, you know, in, in two or three different places. And you know by hearing that, maybe it's across the TV, maybe it's across your phone, or maybe it's, and like in this case, I was, I was with a, a, a brother of mine and he come in at work when all this stuff started and he gave me this scripture. And I walked in the shop and, and read it out loud there. Well, it wasn't a day later, there was a woman at, at uh, as I started to share it, there was a woman at my wife's work where I, I had to, to be there because of my work, come out, and, and, and she had known I was a preacher, and I knew she was a Christian lady. She said hi, and we began to speak, and I said something about it to her. 
and, and she shared the same scripture with me right then. That was two people. I sent it to my aunt in uh, Iowa and to talk to her, and it was a scripture that she had, uh, when my uncle had passed, she had put on his headstone. And then I was talking to my brother Jeff here the, the next day, and, and this about, and I, I hadn't even mentioned it. And he brought up this same scripture, this Psalm 91. He brought it up, brought it up to me. And so I believe that the Lord was given, given his people this scripture so that, that he would know to give them strength and to give them comfort. And if you haven't found it, I want to share it with you now. And I also want to share with you something that I did because I believe there's power in it. It says we bind and bind on what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And uh, I believe there's something binding to writing a prayer and, and writing God's word down. And don't get me wrong. It says in his word that he will show mercy to who he shows mercy. And he will have compassion on who he has compassion. And you can't ever, I don't think we can ever get outside of the will of God. And heaven forbid, I don't want to ever be outside of the will of God. I pray every day that his will be done. But I believe God will give his people, you know, that, that, that seek him. And, and love him. I believe there's power in writing his word and writing prayers down. So I want to read this to you. This is what I done. I wrote, wrote a prayer and I, I put this, this word, this Psalm 91, these few verses out of it to that prayer. I don't have a prayer closet, but I got a prayer corner. And I take that up in my little prayer corner and I read it. I, it, it almost at night when I, before I go to bed, I've read this prayer along with another prayer that I have wrote. So I, I just want to share this with you because I believe with all my heart and all my soul that there's strength in it. It says, He that dwelleth in a secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckle. I just believe that with all my heart. And you skip down here to nine. It says, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Thou shalt no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh to thy dwelling. I want to read that again. Thou shalt no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh to thy dwelling. To thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Guys, I believe there's power in God's word. And if you apply it to your life, and, and we all know that there's power in it, and that the joy, the strength, our strength, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I believe that if we praise him, we've all been praying through this thing, that maybe we need to start to praise him through. We need to let that sun shine in our hearts and, and, and thank God the sun come out today. And I believe it's going to keep coming out. But we need to let that sun shine in our hearts. And, and you know, guys, we, we need to be careful. There's no doubt. But I'm looking forward to the day when this church is filled back up. I'm looking forward to the day. Oh, what a day it will be. Whenever we can come in here and, and all of us worship together again. And whether this thing, when this thing is behind us and we know that we're going to come out of it. Because I know we're going to come out. We're going to come out strong. And I'm going to give him praise for it. Not only am I going to pray to him. Not only am I writing scripture down and writing prayers down that I believe that are spiritually binding. But I also believe with all my heart that we should praise him through and that our momentary light afflictions are producing us a far more eternal and incomparable weight of glory and Romans 8 18 says for I reckon that the suffering of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which should be re revealed in us now if you've uh, like I said guys if you, if you don't know the Lord and you haven't accepted Jesus for your Savior, I, I pray that you would come now. And, and uh, whether you be at your home or, or in your car or, or wherever you're at, 
I would just pray that you would accept him. And, and guys, if, if you've got something between you and your brother or between you and your, your sister or a family member, then I want you to know that you've got something between you and the Lord. It says, we must forgive those that trespass against us if we expect our Father in heaven to forgive us for our trespassing. So, guys, lay it down. You should see at this time that the things that, that were a big deal a few weeks ago don't seem like such a big deal today. The things that, that we were holding on to, that we were mad about, or that we were upset about a few weeks ago, I tell you what, they don't seem so big. So if you've got that person in your family or that person in your life that, that y'all got this, this distance between you because of this or because of that, I'm going to tell you there ain't no better time. It's time right now to get things right. And I believe wholeheartedly that if this country would turn their face back to the Lord, if they would put in God we trust back in the places that it belongs, that we would see our land start to heal. And I'm going to give God praise for it. I'm going to give him praise that this is going to be over one day. And Brother Jeff is going to come, and he's going to sing a song of invitation. And I would pray, no matter where you're at, that if you don't know the Lord, that you would give your heart to him. And then I'm going to pray as I have after Jeff, Brother Jeff gets saying, done singing, and I'm, I know this is a little different. And, uh, it was a little different for me. So... I just pray that it's uh, it's encouraged you and it's give you hope. Remember, if you've got Jesus, we've always got hope. So thank you.
because I'm going to read that scripture one more time. Uh, 12, Isaiah 12, 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you shall draw water out of the wells of our salvation. Guys, we have the joy of the Lord as our strength. And we should praise him through this time. Even when times are hard and harder and, and different than we've ever seen. But I'm going to begin to praise God because I know he's going to bring us out of it. So I'd like to just pray out with you here and, and uh, thank you for, for watching and, and listening. And I hope it's helped you. I'll give you hope. You ready, brother? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord God, just thankful to be in your house at Belmont today, Lord God. Lord, I hope that uh, we have pointed people towards the cross, Lord God. I hope we have given people hope. They're in, uh, in times like they've never seen, Lord God. And I hope they, they, Lord, begin to praise you, Lord God, to know that you are going to bring us out of this, Lord. Lord, that we even we pray our way, Lord God, but we praise our way through this. We praise you through this, Lord God. And Lord, that all our hope is in our salvation, Lord. And we have the, the joy of the Lord as our strength, yes, Lord. Lord, we pray that no sh no plague shall come nigh yes, to Lord. any dwelling, to any uh, member yes, of this God. church or, or, Lord, anyone else, Lord God. We just love you and we thank you, Lord. And Lord, we, uh, we give you all the praise and glory and honor for everything, Lord. And we just do everything, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen.